Uh, quick, quick reminders before we begin. Uh, please say your name and affiliation before asking your question. Uh, with as many people as we have up here on the dais, uh, please direct your question to one of the members before asking it. Uh, if you're in the Zoom room, uh, use the raise your hand function and we will get to you uh, as we can. Your regional champion, Virginia Tech. With us here is head coach Kenny Brooks along with student athletes, Taylor <laughs> Soule, Elizabeth Kitley, Georgia Amor, Kayla King, Kayana Trailer, and DeAsia Gregg. Coach, congratulations. <laughs> we'll begin with your opening statement if I don't drop my computer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 don't, we, we don't mind if you want to start over and talk about their regional champion part. <laughs> <laughs> they had a really good ring to it. No, uh, I, brought all my, I brought all my friends here, my babies. Um, and you know what? We couldn't, get, we couldn't have gotten it done without each and every one of their efforts, uh, their sacrifices, um, everything that they've done for this program. They have, they have sacrificed so much. Uh, they drowned out outside noise, inside noise. Um, they let it fuel them in a very positive way. And uh, it showed tonight. You know, we kept hearing it. Uh, you know, congratulations to Ohio State. You know, Kevin's done a tremendous job with that group. They're a lot of fun to watch. And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you what, that was a high-level basketball game. And it was a lot of fun to be a part of, and I'm sure it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, but, you know, they, they heard it. They, they hear a lot of stuff. We, we heard about the press and, uh, you know, what are you going to do? And, you know, we had a couple of stumbles against Tennessee. And I thought these kids, the way they focused, they locked in. We came up with a game plan. They executed it perfectly. And uh, I don't think the press was a factor uh, all long, all game long. And then we had to play. And you give them credit. Mike still got – she got hot early. Um, you know, it seemed like no one was going to miss – uh, but then the second half, we locked in, understood what we needed to do, um, the job that uh, Kayana did on her and, and, um, and Kayla. Uh, they really made it tough for her. And then we just did everything else right, did all the little things. So very proud of them, very team effort, uh, tremendous win for this group, tremendous win for our university. We'll open up the questions. We'll start with Lindsay. Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. Uh, Georgia, I think, first of all, we all want to know what happened when you went off the floor. But the other thing I was curious about was early in the game when they were pressing, you turned the ball over, called timeout, coach walked out and was talking to you and like teaching you on the floor, I think. He was demo he was motioning, you need to go here, we need to do this, that type of thing. Can you talk about what type of teacher he is on and off the floor? Yeah, this man is still fit. Um, we have individuals and he does the move and I copy it, exactly. <laughs> but I am definitely more of a <laughs> visual learner. Um, so for him to like explain it, you know, he played the point guard and with like the press and all of that, I just can't, you know, I'm small, I have to use that to my advantage, but I also have to use a, you know, just basic moves to blow by them. So that was a big part of it, um, I think. For the press, it got a bit choppy when we started passing it too much. Um, and I really just needed to break it by dribbling through it. Um, and for the, the hit part, I just copped a, I don't even know what it was in the chin, and it just knocked me off center, but I was fine. Just caught my breath. <laughs> Mark Berman, the Roanoke Times, congratulations. Uh, for Liz and, and Kayla as, as fourth year Hokies, what does it mean to you to be part of the first uh, tech team to make the final four? That's so um, crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I was gonna say that. Um, it means everything. Uh, especially just with this group. We all come from different places, but this year we came together because we all wanted the same thing. Um, and it's so nice to be at this spot, but we know that we don't want to be done either yet because we have so much fun playing together. Um, and that's what we talked about at one point in a timeout. We just said that we didn't want this to be our last game because um, we love each other so much and we have fun playing. So we're looking forward to the next one. I mean, going off her, the same thing. It's just great to see how this program's improved every single year um, that I've been here. And to be a part of a program like that, it just means a lot. David Cunningham, Tech Sideline for KT, Taylor, and, and Demo. You guys all transferred into this program. And at some of you guys at, at spots where the program necessarily wasn't in the right spot or needed some work to be done, to sit here now and you guys are going to the Final Four, what does it mean to each one of you guys? Yeah, um, it means everything. It's exactly what I came for, honestly. Um, I think I can s speak for myself, but I think also uh, Taylor and Demo, like we just really bought into what uh, Coach Brooks was already building here, to be honest. Um, as far as like culture and 
everything like that and yeah just let us to hear yeah um yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 I think no. On on a serious note, um, stink microphone. Uh, go hokies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for real speeches. I'm speeches. I'm blessed. I love these people so much. And like Liz said, I don't, I don't want it to be done. Um, I came to Virginia Tech uh, because of the people. Um, I play hard because of the people, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, yeah, for me, um, I wanted to come here. I wanted to. Uh, be a part of something that's big. Um, I knew I saw what he was building. Um, I just bought in the program. First year, didn't play. Uh, Look back up. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept my head down. Just kept working. Um, didn't let that discourage me. You know, uh, it just pushed me to go, go harder and to play for my teammates. Matthew Walter, the next Georgia for you. Over the last 15 games, I think since you guys last lost, you've been on a tear. Just. How have you just felt confidence growing in you over these last 15 games? And then how exciting was it when the game was over and they played Enter Sandman? Because it just seemed like all of you guys got all this energy. I know it's the Virginia Tech song, but to hear it all the way out in Seattle. Yeah. Um, these girls just give me the absolute confidence. And Coach Brooks, you know. I could have – I mean, I did have some rough shooting tonight, but, like, they weren't discouraging at all. They told me that they would take them over anything else any other day, and that just is what you need. And – really good teammates and we just are so focused on winning um it's like that that really breeds a confidence and nsm and what yeah. graphic did marsh man has put out where they put the hokey pokey or something yeah. like that did y'all see oh, yeah. that it's nsm man okay. but it was just great <laughs> mark uh, mark berman the roanoke times uh for nadia um so many good teams did not make it to dallas what enabled this team to live up to its one seed and, and get there Elizabeth, why don't you start? Uh, I think we just wanted it more. Um, this has been something that we've set out for, and I think once this group of girls sets their mind to something, it's going to be really hard to deter us from that. Um, and that's just our mindset the last few uh, months, honestly. We just have the most confidence in ourselves, and we don't care what anybody else thinks. Hey, I've been Pickman from The Athletic. Um, for Georgia and, and Kayla, you know, Kenny likes to talk about stopping and smelling the roses. I guess for you guys specifically yesterday, you said you hadn't done that at all yet. Um, is there a moment tonight that you feel like it has sunk in or, or you've been able to stop and, and smell those roses? For me, it was when Liz had a last set of free throws because I think it was like 40 seconds left to go. I was like, I'm not comfy yet. And then Liz's last set of free throws, I was like, oh my God, like this is about to, the buzz is about to go off and this is about to happen. So that was definitely my moment. Um, personally, when I fouled out and got to the bench, <laughs> um, I was able to, like, <laughs> to watch and, like, let it sink in because I wasn't in the game. But, um, yeah, that, that, was, that was me personally. <laughs> uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN. Uh, sort of along the lines of the earlier question, Georgia, nobody has ever made more threes through the first four games of an NCAA tournament than you have. I mean, can you process that sort of a hot streak while it's happening? Mm -mm. <laughs> um, I just like to shoot the three ball. <laughs> and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Other questions for our student athletes? Get up the front. Yeah, Taylor, they pressed you guys originally, and then you broke it. And did they sh them shifting to, to not pressing you, just playing you guys in the half court, did that surprise you at all? And on the other side, what did you like about the way after halftime you guys defended Mike Sell better? Um, we knew going into the game um, that if we handled the press well, that they would back off a little bit. And so um, kudos to everybody for helping out and doing that. Georgia, I don't know how you do it, man. I just sit, I honestly sit back in the backcourt and just watch what you do in awe. Um, in second half, um, again, we just knew we had to lock in defensively, help each other out. Um, and I think we communicated well. These two were chasing her all over the floor all night. Um, and so it was definitely a team effort and uh, proud of everybody. Matthew Walter with the next, this is for you, Taylor, and then if anyone wants to chime in, you go to do your radio interview and there's about a bunch of Hokies fans sitting right behind me and you throw them the little heart with your hands. Just how much does it mean to you guys to have 
all those people travel all the way from Blacksburg, all the way out to Seattle to support you guys when you're going for this first ever one and to do it with all these fans because they were they were loud all night right behind us. Hokie Nation is the best nation out there. Shout out them. Uh, I was talking to someone in the crowd and she was like, oh yeah, I came from like Blacksburg yesterday. I'm like, dang, like you were real. Oh, Hokies are crazy. Oh, I got work or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I absolutely love Hokie Nation. They've uh, taken me in with open arms and loved on me. And so it's only right that I, that I give that love back. Give it a second. And then Alexa. Um, Eden Mossy, Just Women Sports, Georgia. Um, when you went out and then we're getting ready to come back in, like what was going through your mind? I talked to your cousin and she told me, she was <laughs> like, there's no way Georgia's going to stay <laughs> off the floor. Um, and then just also, what does it mean to have her here and be able to share that with her? Yeah, I just had a little bit of rage um, and some catching up to do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're a strong team and I think they were playing physical and I don't like when people beat down on my teammates. So as, as soon as I copped the beating, I went back and I refreshed and I came out with a different mindset. But um, it was great to have Killy there. Um, I'm so happy that she was there. And then I got a FaceTime from my mom after the game and mom and dad are flying out tomorrow to Dallas. So. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be like a <clears throat> sixteen-hour flight <laughs> for, for yeah. But it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. Alexa. Alexa Philippi with ESPN. Um, Elizabeth, when Kenny was up and cutting the net down, he got some Kenny, Kenny <laughs> cheers. I know he's very um, humble, but how would you put into words what he's done uh, with this program to be able to kind of get you guys and get the program to these new heights? Yeah. Um, I mean, just the places that he's taken it. Um, compared to where it was at when he inherited it. It's just insane. Um, I'm just so happy to be a part of that um, and to be able to witness um, all the hard work that he puts into us and the coaching staff and everything. He just has crafted everything um, and stuck by his vision and what he wanted, uh, no matter what you know other people had to say or whatever. And I think that's so valuable in a leader. And we wouldn't be where we are without that mindset from him. David Cunningham, Tech Sideline, Kayla. I'd ask Liz about it, but I know she'd be way too humble. She <laughs> broke the double doubles record in Virginia wow. Tech history today, 56 in her career. You've, you've played with her every step yeah. of the way to see her growth and in, in the same trajectory as this program. How would you describe it? And just, you know, she had 25 tonight and, and 12, and mm -hmm. uh, ev everything she goes through down to the post. What, from your vantage point, you know, what has she meant to this program? I mean, honestly, I've never seen someone that, like, worked harder. Um, like, if we were back at home, I bet she'd be in the gym tomorrow, honestly. Um, she works out with Coach Brooks, and I feel like she translates it to the game like no other. Um, her and Georgia, I've never seen someone, like, continuously get better in season like they do. Um, but she also is just willing to do whatever the team needs, and sometimes she, her role is to kick it back out. And, like, she gets tripled, doubled, and she can still produce those numbers, which is insane. All right, and being told we do need to let the players go. They have some other obligations to go to. Congratulations to all of you. Best of luck in the final yeah, four. Ladies. <laughs> Hey, Kenny and Lindsay from USA Today. Um, you talked the other day about you understand the significance of, you know, being a, a black male coach. There aren't very many in, yeah. uh, in the women's game. You know, last year at the Final Four, Dawn talked about that she wanted to use her platform to lift up m male black coaches too. And I, I don't know if you're friends, if you're close, but I wondered what that means. You know, she is the face of the sport to yes. have her... Uh, being an ambassador for you, and also, do you have a piece of the net? Did she send you one? I do not. You gotta go get your own. Yeah, I gotta get my own. Maybe I'll send. No, um, <laughs> no. When when Dawn said that, it, it was everything. It meant everything because uh, there's some rhetoric out there that uh, the men don't belong. There's actually, you know, from some prominent people saying that they would never hire a male. Uh, that breaks my heart because you know this is all family, and families need you know mothers and need fathers, and I think that you know so many. It's black males, males in general can be father figures. And uh, it goes to, you know, I think we fought so hard to get to this point 
but we're not talking about race, we're not talking about gender, and when people won't give you an opportunity because of your race, I don't think that we've gotten where we need to get to. So I did hear that, and when I heard it, I mean, I wanted to stand up and applaud her um, because she is the face of women's basketball right now. And for her to be able to say that, you know, uh, it gives me credence, gives me credibility that I can echo the same sentiment uh, because I do think, you know, and eventually what we want to get to in a women's game is to get the best people, you know, and I, I keep screaming it from the mountaintops too. I love the fact that there are so many females getting opportunities in the, um, in the NBA. Uh, Christy Tolliver, I've known her since she was six years old. Uh, she texted me the other night, you know, congratulating me, and I think she's going to be a head coach, maybe, maybe in the in the NBA one day. But what she's doing, basketball is basketball, and uh, and when we get to the point where we're just getting the best people there, then the game the game is going to grow, the sport's going to grow, and I think our society will grow from it. So um, I'm going to use my platform. Uh, I, I've said this before. Um, I think I have a little bit of credibility now, a little bit of equity, and uh, that I can go say some things that that will help people that look like me. You know, because there are a lot of them out there that are really, really good and can be really, really good for this game. So that if anybody can watch me run the program, you sat here, you saw my team, okay? They were white, they were black, they were both, you know, and it's all about just being a family. And, um, and I think that we have tremendous people out there that are looking for opportunities. Coach Matthew Walter with the next, in both stature and playing, why is Georgia a perfect Robin to Elizabeth's Batman? And then what Jurassic Park reference do we have for this win? I'll answer the first question. Um, she is a tremendous Robin to um, Liz's Batman because Liz is a tremendous Robin to George's Batman. They don't care. They do not care. When, jo when Georgia wins, Liz is jumping up and down. When, when Liz wins something, George, uh, George is jumping. I mean, they, they just love each other. They just want to win. These kids do not care. They just want to win. All, all six of them sit up here, they just want to win. So coaching them is a joy because they don't pout when they don't get the ball. They share it. We, we call our offense like a boomerang offense. You pass it, it'll come back to you. You just got to keep moving. Keep moving, and then eventually it'll come back to you. And that we created that, and uh, you know, with the kids, we brought them in. The, the sacrifice they were willing to make, and um, and I'm stalling right now because I'm trying to come up with a good Jurassic Park uh, reference. <laughs> Jurassic Park, they they're all my my favorite movies. As, as a matter of fact, uh, the vehicle that I drive is a Ford F-150 Raptor. You know, so I think I've taken it a little bit too far. So, but uh, no, but you know what? I do tell them all the time the way we play defense. You know, we're we're not. We're, we're not a T-Rex. We're not. We, we can't go out there and just one-on-one -on -one guard you. We cannot. All right, but we hunt in packs. Uh, we hunt in packs, and that's the way the raptors hunt. You know, they can't do it by themselves. They have to force you one way, and then there's some help, and then all of a sudden they pounce on you, and that's our defense because as much as I lo love all of them, if it, if it was a one-on-one -on -one tournament, they would all lose, you know. But as a group, together, and the way they've connected, uh, we're pretty good defensively. Tim. Uh, Tim Booth from the AP. Kenny. Um, you're standing on the ladder, your name's getting chanted, Sandman is playing. Can you describe what that moment was like for you and what it means for the program? Well, first and foremost, if you are a Hokie or you're associated with Hokies, uh, it doesn't matter where you are. When Inner Sandman comes on, you just start bobbing your head. It, it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I mean, I, I have a video of myself I had uh, after we won the game against South Dakota State. Um, I had some wings. And I really wanted to just eat because, you know, you're worried about everything. And I was, I sat down, I had a beverage, I had my wings, and then one of the girls played Inner Sandman. And all of a sudden, I just started bobbing. I'm like, this is a great day. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. In the summertime, we play Inner Sandman in our house, and we just run around and just start jumping up and down, you know, because it's a part of Virginia Tech, you know. It, and and it, the fact that we can bring joy uh, to Virginia Tech, to Hokie Nation, uh, that song comes on. It, it means everything. It means everything. I, I don't, one of the coolest moments, I don't know if you saw it, but the um, NCAA wouldn't let us play Inner Sandman, and the student section started singing it a cappella. That was chilling. You know, I mean, they were so good with it. They were singing it a cappella, and Georgia hits a three to start the game. They stopped for a second and cheered and then picked up right where they left off. That, that's how good they were with it. We'll go Lindsay, Jerry, and then Mark. Kenny, a lot of people say this is the hardest game to win, and a lot of people get tight in the big moment. Early in the first half, you know, we're just, like you said, being played at a high level, great back and forth shot making. 
you just had this little smile on your face the whole time, and I wondered how much fun were you having, and were you aware of the fact that you were smiling and not looking angry? I, w I wasn't having fun. <laughs> I think I was smiling because uh, they were making big shots, and we were where we were supposed to be for the most part. And uh, and we, like I think our defense is underrated. It really is. You know, we we are really good defensively. Like I said, we're not going to steal. We, it's not glamorous because we don't get out there and press you, but we really we really take away a lot of things. And we were where we were supposed to be, and then uh, Mike so was hitting shots, and I think that was a little. Uh, the little uh, smirk I had. And I had another moment with Kevin. Uh, I think we were up 10, I don't know how many, I think maybe two minutes ago in the game, maybe a little bit more, and Georgia hits that three right in front of our bench, and it was unbelievable. And I, I think when I turned around, my eyes were as big as saucers, and he looked at me, and he just went, and he winked at me, and I'm like, hey, you know, it's just, you know, that's how incredible she is. But um, it, it, it was, the kids were loose. You know, and this group is as mature and professional as any group I've ever seen, I've ever been around. And the moment's not too big. And I think we'll go to Dallas, and I think that we'll be ready to play again. And so I'm excited about it. Jerry? Yeah, Kenny, uh, Jerry Brewer from the Washington Post. I'm wondering, what do you remember when Witt called you and offered you the job? What kind of surrounded that? And was there ever any doubt that you would take it? There's always doubt because, uh, um, I, I would have been leaving, I was leaving my alma mater, my home, uh, a place where I grew up, a place that, you know, did so much for me and James Madison. Uh, but it got to the point where I think my last three years, I saw a stat uh, in the CAA, I was 60 and three. Yeah, 60 and three. And it was like, okay, it's time. It's time to not leave, but it's time to see what I can test my wits against the best. And, um, and you know, going back to the, to the, to the opportunities part, I didn't get a lot of opportunities. You know, I had schools right across the mountain that wouldn't call me. I had Power Five schools that would have an opening I would never get a call. And uh, and but then at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I don't have to leave. When Wit called me, uh, there was a familiarity with Wit. Uh, you know, we, we uh, went to the same university, uh, played against each other in high school basketball. But his father was a mentor of mine, and so um, if I was going to leave, it was going to be for a place that I felt comfortable with and we inherited a program here I, kn I knew uh, the sky could be the limit and I uh, took that leap of faith and it was tough because my teams at James Madison were really good the team I left at James Madison had a, uh, an, a first round WNBA draft pick you know I came to Virginia Tech and we had none of those and uh, we had to start all over again but um, you know it took a leap of faith a lot of hard work a lot of coaches efforts uh, kids these kids up here really changed the culture and uh, I th it's funny because when, when I talked to my presser when he hired me, you know, I, I got a little overzealous. And it was right after when uh, Syracuse went to the final game. And I said, if Syracuse can do it, well, why can't we? And, you know, and it, was, it was great. People erupted. Yay, yay, yay. And I thought I stuck my foot in my mouth. Uh, but, you know, seven years later, here we are. We're short on time, so these will be our last two questions. Mark. Uh, Kenny, what, what does follow up on that? What does it mean to you that I think your seventh anniversary of your hiring was just the other day? Uh, you know, did you envision at some point that you would get to this point, and what does it mean to, to have gotten here? And then also, as far as the game, uh, you know, why was that press of theirs not as, a, as effective against you guys as, as it was against UConn on Saturday? I don't know if you even envision it uh, or more if you dream it. Uh, and I think we were dreaming it. You know, and obviously, it, this is not easy. And uh, one day I'll sit back and, and realize how hard it was for us to get here and realize we're one of four teams uh, still standing. So I don't know if it was a vision, it was more of a dream, and uh, now that dream's come true, and now we need to build upon it. But, uh, but the actual game, uh, we, we watched, we watched, I watched a lot of film um, last night, the night before, the day before, uh, and watched how different teams handled their pressure. Uh, UConn, they were trying to pass the ball through the press, uh, and we felt like that Georgia could dribble through it, and, and she didn't do it by herself. We, um, we set screens. Uh, on them, and so Georgia had one-on-ones instead of dealing with two people. And uh, Georgia one-on-one with anybody in an open court situation, I'll take that uh, bet any day. Um, so I th that's why we were successful. That's why they say, yeah, Georgia broke it, and everyone was watching Georgia. But uh, Taylor Soul or, or Kayana Trailer, they set some good screens to get her free. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. And thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. See you in Dallas. We told we told